Hi everyone, welcome back to Learning Bridge. I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. So guys, in the today's podcast, I have called someone who is highly experienced, like having more than twenty plus years of experience in this IT industry. He is someone who got his first job because of the open source contribution that to twenty years back. And after that, he was doing research in parallel computing, compiler designing in NASA and other organizations. And in the twenty years of career, he have been on to multiple roles with different different tech giants like Microsoft, Amazon, Expedia, City. So now you can understand the amount of experience he is having. And now he is basically a co-founder of a very very amazing platform. Name is Every Dot One. So we all know about the LinkedIn and the kind of professional platform it is. But even on LinkedIn, things are not up to that mark. I mean, if you are someone who is very very keen to learn new things or to connect with people and the person who only talks about the tech things and apart from that let's say you are trying to find a good organization for you you want to interact with their teams actually you want to have a conversation with those team members who are working in that organization and if you want to become a part of very solid tech community then this is the kind of platform every dot one so achal prabhakar sir will definitely talk about this platform he is working on and the solid community they are trying to build using this platform so link is in the description definitely you should check that out i have also created my account there because definitely i want to make a solid network with the techy people only which are only talking about the tech stuff not any random motivational things or any random activities now let's quickly jump on to the podcast part and we will learn from his experience of 20 years so first of all thank you very much uh, achal sir for joining us today and i'm really happy to have you on my channel thank you so much sashank it is also my pleasure to be here uh, you know you said a lot of big words <laughs> i think most of them are not warranted uh, so really appreciate you having me here and uh, giving us an opportunity to chat like this thank you yeah so i i have prepared some questions for you sir so uh, let me ask the first one so uh, like you are having more than 20 years of experience for different roles like uh, don't mind but i was stalking your linkedin profile so <laughs> yeah you you have uh, like that much experience like for software engineering research vp manager advisor for startups and now like you you are a co-founder of a startup like every dot one so would you like to share your industrial experience with our audience and which role uh, like was more challenging for you and full of learnings yeah well there are many you know people talking on linkedin is not about <laughs> one of those reasons why i do not like linkedin <laughs> <laughs> it becomes something else uh, and we'll talk about it as we talk about every yeah um but yeah uh, you know i'm happy to share uh, sort of my journey uh, my career and life also is what i would call accidental okay <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't set out planning for hey look in 20 years i'm going to do this and therefore these are the sequences of things i'm going to do uh it grew out of you know a very fundamental uh, passion I've been a software developer for all of my life as long as, as I can remember what my life is right <laughs> uh, started uh, dabbling with uh, computers and single board you know electronics back in 7th grade and as the grades grew you know my sort of uh, self awareness of what I know and what I want to do about computer science also grew and uh, I became what you call a hobbyist software developer you know dabbling in uh, communities and uh, Uh, writing software with others uh, as you get better at doing that you start feeling more confident and at that time you start becoming involved with open source projects right so that's yeah. how i started off by contributing software to open source and going from there right like a typical uh, software engineering I'm journey way back when when internet was not predominant in india okay <laughs> yeah so that's uh, sort of like how i started by you know fundamentally being passionate about writing code reading reading other people's code was actually even better <laughs> of a passion and that led to me becoming an open source developer and freelancing uh, on couple other options here and there and as the time went by you know you start to learn both in terms of breadth and in terms of depth here and there right okay um uh, on the way you know the good thing about open source software was that on the way you end up interacting with some extremely talented people right people that you would never meet otherwise in your life you know that early on in my career i was collaborating with people from uh, you know uh, back here in the us uh, canada uh, someone sitting in europe a uh, few people from latin america and i had no idea who they are where they are but the work they were generating and the learnings i was taking from them 
was what you know com- continued to drive me towards you know, hey, this that's, is cool that's the beauty of like the open source contribution like you just get a chance to interact with people whom you won't even see but the matter uh, that is the learnings you get to learn from each other how they write the code what's their perspective how like what's their state of mind their approaches so that's the learning mutual learnings right right and you know everyone has their own learning style right so for me the learning style was uh, who can i imitate <laughs> okay <laughs> who can you who can you copy right yeah. um, and i think that's very fundamental to how we learn you know at least in my opinion as human beings we learn by copy right yeah okay um, and that was the fortunate phase of my life where i got to you know learn from people around the world and work with them contribute uh, code to them um in terms of uh, professional i think uh, one thing that stands out uh, in these 20 20 plus years of uh, career experiences uh, you know uh, the first 10 years of your career whether they start in the 7th grade or they start in the you know the 23rd year of your life i think the first 10 years are very very formative yeah correct uh, that is the time when um, the predominant activity happening is learning you have a very innate desire especially true for us you know people in the software industry we are craftsmen right we are creating something which in my opinion is beautiful art right <laughs> yeah. um and we are trying to get better and better in these first 10 years right and our focus is on learning our focus is on improvement and if you happen to be fortunate enough to have the right environment the right mentors the right you know company and opportunities uh, come by you right then those 10 years uh, form you in the right way uh, after the 10 year time i think the learning shifts into humility <laughs> you, you start to realize okay i thought i was great but you know the world is not so much about you know my craft it's about other people's craft right yeah, correct, correct. um and that's kind of what happened to me also right the first 10 years were how do i figure out getting better at being a software developer at being a designer at being an architect at being a better teammate okay and that's the part that unfortunately i learned kind of like in the later part of the 10 years <laughs> you know i uh, i wish if i could go back i would start from that first one how can i be a better teammate right yeah so, if you would have realized it in an early phase then uh, things could have been in a different direction absolutely right Yeah. and it's it's very sad because i started from being an open source developer which was all about teamwork <laughs> yeah. you know and working with others but then as you get into the career you start to become very singularly focused on how do i grow how do i get to that next you know phase of my life and so on and honestly i think that turns people a little bit selfish and it turned me a little bit selfish but fortunately i kind of learned out through mistakes how to walk back from it right okay um career wise i think um starting from you know scarcity was actually very very important so you know it's in- interesting because when i was uh, coming so actually let me step back and talk about this uh, i don't have a computer science degree right okay uh, in fact after coming out of school i went to one college and didn't really do anything and ultimately uh, a letter from the principal came home saying you have only showed up for like less than 10% of classes so we'll have to you know kind of part ways thank you <laughs> right uh and that was because i ended up going to a uh, discipline that I had no passion for okay right so after that i did go to a science discipline and you know did my college for 3 years but uh, again that was not computer science i did that in chemistry okay um so you can imagine you know 1996 1998 it's it's kind of hard to get a job when you don't have a computer science degree right yeah uh, this is one of those first time in my life when i realized we can work very hard but in reality you know there are forces outside of our control that pull and push us right okay and my first job came about as i was coming out of that chemistry honors degree from st stephen's college and someone who ran a fairly large uh, you know uh, internet focused company found me on one of those things called bulletin board systems <laughs> that i used to you know run with a friend of mine and we got together and he liked it and he had a need for someone who can you know uh do some linux work in their company so that was my first job right? okay that's and interesting there was also the first instance like i said where someone ended up pulling me into some direction right uh yeah. but i ended up coming out of the country and this time uh, came in for my master's degree 
again, cut to short, you know, a very interesting master's degree, did a lot of research in parallel computing, but then afterwards, that was not a good time to find a job. Yeah. You know, it was not a great market and so on and so forth. And like other people around me, I was also quite a lot struggling with how do I find a job, right? Yeah, like today, nowadays, like the, the way like opportunities are getting better and better and the like n number of techn tech technologies, emerging technologies you can see. So scope is wide, but definitely like when you started, actually things were like just uh, like revolution was going on in the IT industry and you guys were the part of it. Correct, correct. I mean, this was the day when you, if you need a database, you had to pay Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, it was complicated because, you know, I was always a bit of a, a independent thinker and I wanted to do what I wanted to do, right? And that's useful. Uh, but this was the second time where something interesting happened. Uh, this uh, person who was fairly high up in the university's command of chain, right? I, a vice chancellor at the university uh, gave me a job that I had no qualifications for. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. And, you know, um, and this, was, this would become a theme, uh, you know, uh, and it takes a while before I was consciously realizing that, uh, you know, we succeed in our lives because of the effort we put in. So a lot of it is our past delivery, but a lot of it is also um, people's blind faith or their gut feeling that gives you an opportunity, right? So that's how my career started. You know, uh, Dr. Arun Jain uh, gave me a job at the University of Houston as a developer. And uh, very, very coincidentally, uh, last week, after 22 years, he found me on LinkedIn. Wow. <laughs> and he pinged me, right? Uh, and he's now retired. Uh, so he pinged me and we had an hour and a half long conversation last week. Okay. And there are so many good things to talk about just that conversation, including how humble he still is. Right? And I'm talking to him again this afternoon. Right? So nice. it was such a good feeling to see. Uh, and I didn't, honestly, I didn't have enough words to tell him that, look, I know you're telling me that you're proud of where I am, but I can't tell you how strongly enough that I am here only because you took a chance yeah. when I was nothing. Right? So that's how my career started. Right? And that first job was about building payment gateways, document management systems, and also got me into understanding how enterprise systems work. And how does you, how do you handle this interconnectedness of enterprise systems, the complexity of humans involved and the inertia that a certain set business process brings about. Okay. For example, one of my job was to build an online uh, fully automated document management uh, mechanism. So the millions of documents that show up at the University of Houston registrar's office can be digitized, right? Okay. And to me, it was like, oh, that should be simple. I mean, you, you build some OCR technology, you, you know, get some scanners and you know, get it going. Right? <laughs> that was the easy part. The hard part was getting people to understand that they need to now stop doing what they were doing before and start <laughs> doing it now. Right? And as a young kid, I had no idea how to actually influence people. Yeah, how that, to that, that develop would have been empathy. a toughest part. Yeah, that could have been a toughest part for you. I, I, I. So... To answer directly your question around career, I think that was one of the most formative years uh, when I had a job where there was not a lot of processes and people around me. I had to completely solve some big problem on my own. Yeah. And then I had to work with other human beings and getting them to understand that this is good for them and they should change their way of life just because this kid comes in and says, you know what, I have a better one. Okay, so that was the most challenging part you think like in the 20 years of experience, uh, that was the most critical and the like, toughest challenging time for you. Yes. And, and there are specific reasons why that was so. Number one, uh, it told me the importance of believing in abundance. Yeah. And later on, you know, when I went to Expedia, uh, Aman, who is the CEO of GoDaddy now, he had this uh, messaging that was very popular at that time in the company through him that you should not believe in scarcity. Right? And when I look back, I actually learned about this back in the university, but I uh, adopted the terminology when I started to work with him. Right? Okay. So 
I walked into the job with the mindset of scarcity, right? Oh, very little amount of money. There is no resourcing. You know, I have to do this all by myself. There's no help around me, blah, 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 right? Uh, but I walked out of the job with a mindset of there's always an abundance of opportunity. There's always an abundance of, you know, helping people. There's always an abundance of what you can solve, right? And if you have that attitude to look at this as it's not scarce, it's actually abundant, then you adopt a mindset that allows you to, you know, be positive. Yeah, and definitely. And when you're positive, creativity flows, innovation happens and so on and so forth, right? So that's why I think that that was one of the most critical phase of my life as I developed, right? Okay. After that, you know, you can put it just as a, like a natural sequence of things, you know. <laughs> now I went to Citigroup, you know, uh, 1 million people in there and my job is to get, you know, build some software that brings 300 businesses together. Naturally, you're going to talk to, you know, thousands of people and learn about the complexity and so on, right? From Citigroup to Microsoft, obviously, you know, that's a cultural shock, but then you realize hey, that's what distinguishes Microsoft from everyone else, right? <laughs> Microsoft to Amazon, you are in Amazon. So yeah. Microsoft to Amazon was like, oh, wow, that is cool, right? <laughs> let's, let's talk more work. Yeah. Okay. So that's how the transition happens. Like you look for the opportunities, culture, and every every aspect matters. So that's how, uh, as you said, like after 10, 15 years, it was just like a normal sequence of moving on different roles and the organizations. Correct, 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 right? And obviously, I mean, not to belittle each role, everywhere you go, you learn something very, very important, right? Microsoft taught me how to be a people manager, how to be a people leader, right? Amazon gave me a first-hand experience at what is the actual importance of company values, company culture, right? When it comes to business deliverables, right? Yeah. Um, I worked in the early part of Expedia in India, and that was a very formative phase for that company as they established their technology presence. I played a huge role in that, but that huge role also meant I realized at every instance, I have never done this before, right? And then you have to do it. And then you realize again, you have never done this before. Then you do it again, right? Uh, Hair technology was very large organization, B2B, you know, uh, 800 plus people. So you figure out how to you know, be global, be large scale, you know, and so on and so forth. Uh, product management came through, you know, as I worked my way out of uh, uh, Expedia, Amazon, here, et cetera. Right? And you get more and more as you go uh, forward. But um, I think those, I call them incremental learning. Cool. So that's a definitely a very, very interesting journey. And I think I learned a lot from your words that how actually normal flows, uh, like how things normally flows in this IT industry and how you grow. So as the next step of your uh, like career, uh, like moving from the IT industry to the co-founder of Every.One. So next question would be that, like, can you just explain our audience that what this is every dot one how it is different from others and what sort of benefit it can add like in the user's life right absolutely would love to do that this is the most dearest topic nowadays right <laughs> so look let me repeat what i said before the first 10 years of our career are the most important in terms of uh, forming what we become later on they are also the years when we are fully developing our true potential. You know, everything, everyone has latent potential, right? Every single human being has latent potential, right? Latent potential turns into strong muscles only when you get a chance to exercise them, right? Yeah. And you have to develop the muscle around the craft, around your behavior, yeah. around your you know, interpersonal skills, around your communication skill, around your leadership skills, and so on, right? And... Uh, I firmly, firmly believe that those can only come about when you have a growth mindset, number one, but you also have the right environment around you, right? Environment is made of processes and people, Correct. opportunities, processes, and people actually, right? But the most important part of those three is the people around you, right? And when you are in person, that's the network that is teaching you. Right. Uh, but that is very limiting, right? And that's the source of you know, all the online communities is that they end up expanding the breadth of that uh, circle of human beings that you are interacting with, learning from, contributing back to. Okay. Uh, like I said before, I consider myself fortunate to have those uh, people around me, right? But when you look at the world as it's changing now, 
we learn more things online than we do offline. We learn more things through online communities than through offline communities, right? Yep, that's especially the... for the current generation, right? Yeah, that's that's the natural but, thing of knowledge. Yeah, but it's very unfortunate. But we, when you look at the current professional networks, they have lost that element completely. You go to LinkedIn, what do you see, right? I mean, if I had a dollar for every post on my LinkedIn feed that is about, I am so humbled to have this, and you know. Uh, company videos and you know bs marketing i would be very rich and retired by now right? <laughs> um, it has lost that uh, reason why online communities need to exist right? yeah but you yeah. see that quite a lot in other communities like if you go to stack overflow as a developer you're going to learn pertinent things because there are only pertinent topics that are being talked about yeah right? Right. and i think that is a big, big mistake and big loss that our current professional networks, which for all practical matters happen to be LinkedIn, yeah. do not have that anymore. Right? I consider myself, uh, I imagine myself going back you know, into my career. I have just started a job, I am one year in. Yeah? And in that first year, I've just learned you know, how to work with uh, uh, you know, Java Enterprise Beans and you know, I'm talking old stuff now, yeah. right? <laughs> Enterprise Java Beans and uh, stuff like that. I'm, I'm applying them in my work. Right? Yeah. I would love to talk about that. Yeah, definitely. Like the, sharing but the learnings imagine, and learn from imagine, others. Imagine someone with one year of experience, bring them to today's LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, would, it would be a different experience for that. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, the influencer controlled uh, you know, environment makes it next to impossible and also very intimidating for the younger ones, you know, younger generation, the young professionals to you know, feel confident about sharing small things. Yeah. And I felt like that is unfortunate, but you, you become better by sharing small things. Okay. And that's the thing, like those are not getting noticed. Like, I, And I completely agree with your point. Like the, Somehow uh, things are moving in a different directions on a professional platforms like LinkedIn. Uh, they are not being used in a way they were made for. Yes. That's the thing. Yes. yes, that is true, right? So that was one thing that bothered me quite a lot. Okay? The second thing that bothered me was I'm a new uh, college graduate or I'm three years into my job. Yeah. I would love to find a job. But most companies, you know, look at the way our talent acquisition process has been structured over the years. Sashank is great if he works at Amazon. <laughs> but if he's not at Amazon, ah, uh, I don't know. Man. Yeah, nobody I'm, is I'm going not to gonna talk to a TCS guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay? So we have turned this into a very negative uh, approach. We start to sift people off by seeing where they have not been. Right? But that's not important. I think what I'm actually looking for, and I've hired thousands of people in my career so far, what you actually end up looking for once you cross that artificial filtering is what is Sashang working on? Yeah. Right? What are his strengths? What is he learning? What is his attitude? Right? Those, are, those become important. When you go to an interview, you barely, you know, I might filter you because you have, you have Google, Amazon, Microsoft in your resume. Yeah. But then when it comes to sitting down with you face to face in interview, I don't ask you to tell me about Amazon. So what's Bezos <laughs> doing? How much money is he making now versus now I say, so Sushank, uh, tell me about your skills. Tell me about your project. Tell me about what did you accomplish in the last one year, right? We talk about those things, right? And that's part A. Part B is when you do get an offer, how do you know that that's a good team? Yeah, that's also a, a very, very uh, like generic doubt as a fresher at least, or even if you're new joining a different company, how you gonna get to know that uh, the organization or the team you are going to join is it like will it add any sort of value in your career or skill correct right um, you know you spent 24 years of your life getting ready for that job yeah <laughs> right? and you went into the job and you are now utterly dissatisfied because that is just the wrong place for you right and that happened to you only because there was no way for you to find out in advance right i'll give you an analogy right uh, which city do you live in? Uh, I, I live in like uh, Uttar Pradesh, uh, Lucknow, actual city. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I come into Lucknow 
and have to find you know where can i go and have you know uh, good kebabs right yeah i i know where i would go you know i would go to tunde right? <laughs> yeah but uh, the only reason i would go to tunde is because there is a reputation for yeah. tunde right but let's imagine somebody comes in they have never heard of tunde right um 20 years ago they would just try to walk into whatever they can walk into and sample it and if they don't like it get out yeah but 20 years after you don't do that you open up that the friendly zomato app and say show me through other contributions yeah should i go here or not right yeah. and we have that in every facet of our life you want to buy a refrigerator you check reviews you want to call a plumber you check reviews you want to go to a doctor you check reviews right heck when you are looking for a company you check last over reviews correct correct but going into a team is the equivalent of walking into that restaurant eating the food and realizing this is just bad food but you have no option now you're stuck for a year at least <laughs> yeah. and you keep eating that bad food for a whole year right yeah just because you invested your money then you have to eat it you have to eat it and in this case you know, it's your career right imagine a youngster getting into a job and getting out in 3 months that's not looked at very nicely by the industry right yeah, yeah. it will and therefore uh, bad back a yeah, huge majority of the you know the first 10 year generation end up suffering through bad jobs in bad teams right yeah so that was the thing that really really bothered me you know people like me who are really really focused on creating great organizations creating good culture creating a welcoming and learning and enthusiastic environment yeah we don't want people to be unhappy in our teams and we also don't want people to come into our teams when they know this is not the team for us so you take those three things the early career folks need to be able to demonstrate what they do what are they learning what are they experiencing because that's their profile right they don't have anything else right we need to be able to choose the right teams yeah and once you are inside the team you should be able to say am i happy here or not so that others who will come after you can also see this right and imagine from a team's perspective you are a great team why would you not want everyone to know that you are a great team so others who are excellent at what they do would want to be there right yeah definitely they they love to join that place they would just love to explore and enhance their skill set if they they get a chance to work with a a team they dream for yes and we did not find a solution for that so i sincerely looked back again into glassdoor and all i see was one rating for the company yeah like amazon has four star rating okay so one among 500000 person is what i am and what does that tell me right? second thing is you go to glassdoor you see a ton of negative reviews and a ton of positive reviews nothing in the middle okay <laughs> okay uh and then we looked at blind and you know frankly blind is just you know a lot of people expressing their disgruntlement uh, in a very overtly fashion it's not constructive yeah and it's not helping anyone right it is an outlet sure i can say shashank i hate this place and shashank comes back and says i hate this place too right <laughs> but it's not helping anyone <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so that's why we ended up saying look there's something here that we need to solve for right and that's what we set our sights on hey let's build something that helps early career people to build a uh, network that is meaningful that is interest based if sashank is interested in podcasting he should be associating with other people who are doing podcasting yeah let's eliminate this popularity notion in that network yeah that the, the in, uh, like influencer sort of thing you you were saying right uh, that's culture that 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 culture obviously like people are so obsessed of following people who are um, not sure that the sort of content they used to post any random thing they just they will blindly follow it and there is another guy who's uh, keep posting the interesting stuff uh, let's say image processing or any new stuff uh, like they are posting they will get a uh, like 10 15 likes like like no importance so definitely i feel bad for it because if you are on a social platform a professional platform where you are looking for good people you are looking for the new learnings then you need to keep an eye on those people not the one who are just posting random things and you are uh, just following them or following their posts just for the fun or random motivation correct and that's a great point because that also reminds me you know this notion of connection is really so weird now yeah. 
<laughs> you know, I want to follow you because there's something that you have interesting for me in this phase of my life. But two years after, I might shift into, you know, building wooden furniture. <laughs> yeah. At that point, I have no interest in what you're doing. So I should not have this notion of persistent connections because that's not how the real professional world works. You know? yeah. Yeah. You're, you're, you're learning an interest change over time. So we started with that approach. Let's lower the barrier. Let's take out all that we believe is negative about the current professional network. Popularity, feed ranking, algorithmic placement, advertisements, you know, company BS marketing. Let's take all of it out and turn it into a genuine community. Second, uh, let's focus on transparency, right? And that one is very, very critical. You know, people don't join companies, no matter how much you want to believe that and how much the popular, you know, phraseology says, I just joined Amazon, that never happens. You join that Kindle publishing team, and if even that is like hundreds of people, you join that, you know, one piece of one piece of Kindle publishing team. Mm -hmm. that's your world you're going to interact with that you know two pizza team for three years of your life so we brought it down said look this company level uh, uh, transparency is not useful so we operate at the team level you get to see which teams are in companies who are the people in that team how satisfied are those people being in that team do they like their work are they happy being there how do they feel about their teammates? How do they feel about their manager, right? And this allows an unprecedented level of discovery on both sides. As an individual, Sashank is now talking about meaningful things that are happening in his professional life. The teams that Sashank is interested in are also now visibly out there. Instead of looking at the company, you're now looking at actual teams that are doing the relevant work that is passionate for you. And that cuts out all the middlemen. You are the candidate. You just came out of college. You've been sharing for the last six months what projects you're working on. And imagine this, you don't have to go and put your resume in a black box somewhere. You can look at the team directly. Yeah. And you can connect with the team. You can talk to team members. Yeah, you just lower down that, uh, like, uh, you just minimize that gap, right? Uh, not just don't choose a company, because of its tag, you will be choosing a company if that team, that environment, or the folks, or the work is looking satisfying to you. Correct, correct. And you know, like you were saying, I've had 22 years of you know being out there in the industry. Yeah. I can stake my reputation on this one. You can start with a great company, and another gentleman or another lady can start with a smaller company, an unknown company, like the placard that you have behind you, nothing worth having comes fast. Okay. Eventually, as they both go forward, where they end up at will not have any significance to where they have been. Yeah, definitely. Where they end up at will purely be a consequence of what they did and how they did. Yeah. Because getting into a Google and not doing meaningful work means the next step doesn't exist for you. And getting into a TCS, but being amazing work means, you know, at some point you would be a very, 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 very respected professional and respected professionals get challenging, amazing opportunities. So that's what every is. Every is a no BS professional networking network for individuals and teams, not companies, individuals and teams to express what they do and how they feel. So we allow you to go look at teams, we allow you to see how the health of the teams are, we allow you to connect with those team members, we uh, make it very easy for you to share how you're feeling, and we make it very easy for you to form those close networks that are more meaningful and do not get bothered by <laughs> all the superfluous things that you see in every other place. That's really interesting and one. We chose the name for a reason, by the way, right? Uh, it's not the most intuitive uh, domain name because everyone wants a .com, but we chose it for a very significant reason. This is a network for everyone, not just for the influencers. So everyone, and that's why the profile URLs are structured that way. Everyone slash meet Achal Prabhakar. Everyone slash meet Sashank. So it's for everyone. That's really nice. That's really nice idea. And uh, definitely, 
I am going to explore this one that uh, because whatever you talked about, I can definitely relate to it. In the beginning, it was tough for me to just uh, how industry thing works, what what uh, company do I need to join, teams and everything. Then I think every dot one is definitely a really good platform for those folks who are really interested to build a solid community and they really want to share your their learnings and if they want to learn from people and whatever relevant to the professional life if you are interested to that then definitely every uh, everyone is the uh, right place for you so i'm going to look through it that how it works and i will be joining it and you guys can follow me there as well not for the influencer sake of thing that i mean we will be building a solid community there that uh, like the data engineering related or data analytics i'm into data analytics so i'll connect with those people and we'll share our learnings uh, with each other yeah i would love to see you know what you share about data engineering yeah because, you know i am learning more and more about uh, you know uh, the data aspect of wow. uh, Sure. Sure. Um, now I think uh, I need to come up with the good content related to data engineering. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, sir, so, uh, I have another question for you. I mean, uh, I think like I have multiple questions for you, but most of the things you have covered in these two questions as well, uh, like talking about your professional growth, uh, how to choose a company, what is the challenges. Next, the interesting one I definitely want to touch upon that uh, your initial like. when you started your career right uh, because like nasa is added uh, like with with your name you did the research part there so i again i saw your linkedin profile so i have those data points that uh, what you actually worked upon so can you share that experience so in the nasa for the research part like you were into the hybrid computing parallel programming and compiler designing so how was that learning and uh, can you can you share that Uh, important aspects of parallel programming because nowadays this is the important one like we talk about the products which are highly scalable we are in a world where uh, every single product is going to have a millions of user base so we need to like design our things in such a way that we can handle multiple things uh, on a parallel basis whether i talk about the data analytics uh, definitely distributed computation is there right uh, but since you started at that time then like what was the aspect of it and how it revolutionized the things yeah absolutely and i think this is a, a very um, sort of old topic for computer sciences right but it's still not something that has become mainstream in the same sense that object oriented is right? yeah correct correct so, uh and it's getting there though like if you look at the newer languages uh, you know like erlang has built in concurrency uh, and you know newer languages have taken different approaches around it frameworks have taken different approach or you you contrast with how a java web server used to work and how node works you know there are very stark differences between how how they think of this right yeah. at the end of the day ultimately i think it's about uh, the concept is about simplicity right the way computers work you know from early days to now the complexity has gone up but essentially these are serial machines right yeah they pick an instruction and they pick a data and they operate on that data and they store the data resulting back right and then they move on to the next instruction right as processes evolve you started seeing you know pipelining you started seeing multi cores multi hyperthreading and so on and so forth right and all of those things just basically was trying to work around that very basic architectural limitation that it is going to execute one instruction at a time right but in the real world uh, we have a challenge we have you know either computation or data that both demonstrate a characteristic of being uh, uh, having the ability to be split and done independently you know yeah. that's kind of fundamentally how human beings have also you know progressed over the thousands of years that you know we somehow among all the other animal species we figured out the best on how to divide work and do it together in parallel right uh, the age old uh, you know uh, middle school problem of if you have 10 people to dig a hole versus one person to dig a hole what's the difference right well the same thing applies to parallel computing right you have resources that can only do so much work and if you put many of those resources then the challenge becomes how do you partition the work so they can work together in parallel right and then the complexity starts from there because now we have challenge of synchronization of locking 
of data transfer, data sharing, et cetera, right? When I was doing this research, uh, there was also a challenge and a trend around uh, individual machines, uh, especially the expensive machines, right? I'm talking about this multi-million dollar machines. Okay. They were complex, uh, you know, shared memory multiprocessor machines with uh, sometimes hundreds and thousands of CPUs and threads, oh, sorry, you know, threads cores. And some of them had elaborate cache, cache coherent mechanisms to allow them to work uh, seamlessly, et cetera. And then the challenge was the frameworks of that time. And frankly, I think that challenge continues even today. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, made it very hard for humans to write good parallel programs. And maybe that is one of the small reasons why computer science does not stress so much on parallel computing because it's cognitively difficult for us to you know, wrap our heads around this, right? There are too many race conditions. There are too many things that can go wrong, right? And the natural option was, hey, let's build software that can help them do it, right? So I was part of a group that was uh, uh, championing this new uh, language extension called OpenMP. Okay. And OpenMP relied on this notion that, hey, if you have a serial program, then humans can be fairly good at annotating it and saying, Look, I'm doing a you know a, a matrix multiplication here, and it's fine to split it into multiple processes. Right? Wow. Or hey, these things are happening. I want you to stop here till all of them happen, and then branch out again. Right? Um, and that was the thinking process there. Um, given all the scientific code that had already existed so far, it was much more easier to imagine that you can annotate a Fortran program from the previous era. Okay. and magically make it possible to run faster on these 256 CPU core machine, right? And then uh, as OpenMP was solving that problem, uh, that was kind of the effort that uh, uh, was predominant. A parallel problem started to emerge, which was, hey, we can, we actually have hundreds of those machines. Yeah. And we have somehow managed to now connect them with fast interconnect, right? Uh, can we actually ship software between those machines and make them run in parallel. Right? So that became the focus of my research is, hey, how do you build something that can have this hybrid model of running within the node in a very multi-threaded SMP processor and then uh, communicating with other nodes that are also running that? And how do you allow a serial program to be annotated so it runs like that uh, behind the scene with the compiler doing most of the work? Uh, that was kind of fun, you know, uh, led to a lot of work. Yeah, that's like really cool stuff and really interesting one as well. Uh, I think, but somehow definitely I can relate. Uh, these might sound a building blocks of the distributed competition as well. Like you were talking about uh, earlier, what we were trying to do uh, on a single machine, we were trying to pull the data and just do the competition itself. Now how we are doing it. We are sending our code to the data that this is the data node we have. This is the code piece I have. Just do whatever you want for that piece of data and you are done with it. So I think that those were the things you worked upon definitely uh, like the building blocks of this distributed computation, uh, which uh, like that's the normal thing we, we are uh, observing in every single product. Uh, it's not only about the data analytics, it's, it's every everywhere. Right. It's you know, it's very good to see how much we have come since 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's so easy to now do multi-parallel threaded programming. It's so easy to now do horizontal scaling. Yeah. You know, uh, a number of languages and frameworks have made it super easy to build race condition free, uh, you know, parallel code. Yeah. Um, things yeah. like Hadoop popularized MapReduce, which, you know, uh, is another form of fork and join. Yeah. Right? Um, and... I still feel like a lot of this is continued, continues to be very challenging for new software developers, right? Yeah. In fact, if you go to uh, Every, uh, there's a gentleman from uh, Google Spanner. Uh, Spanner is a heavily distributed, very large scale uh, SQL database uh, from Google. And his name is Kayam. And Kayam shares a lot of interesting papers that he's reading. And just the other day, he shared that he's picking up this fat book of five, 600 pages, okay. uh, which is all about parallel computing. Oh. <laughs> and it's such an impressive book. It starts all the way from the basics and goes through processor architecture, 
memory parallelism, uh, you know, all kinds of race and uh, locking challenges, and then goes through how processes have evolved to solve it, how software has evolved to solve it, how languages have evolved. Absolutely wonderful book to read. So, you know, in your audience, people who are, you know, passionate or curious about learning deeply about the subject of parallel computing, I strongly suggest go to every find that thread Kayam from Google and spend time reading that book along with Kayam. He just finished chapter one and two. And like I said, you know, I would love people to share small things. And Kayam just shared what he learned from chapter one and two. Definitely. And you go to three and four. Uh, I will join it quickly. Definitely the day I'll be posting this podcast, I'll join it and I'll help you guys with that thread. Uh, I'll definitely share it in, in my network as well. Uh, I think uh, now I'm really, really curious about joining uh, every uh, every one. So I'm really curious about it. Uh, okay, so, so I think I have one last question for you uh, uh, before wrapping this uh, session. So uh, I think you have talked about most of the things, but... Uh, I would like to understand from you as you talked about the like freshers as well, entry level freshers as well. And you have uh, like explain about your perspective about someone that don't judge someone by the tag company name, judge someone by their skills, what they have done, what they have achieved in the past years. So similar question, like in the interview process, we have this hiring manager round, right? That is the last one I would say, and that's crucial one as well. Like this is the last step of your interview process. Uh, that would be the last door. Okay. Yes or no, you will be in. So like, what is the expectation from a candidate in this round? And if you can, based on your experience, since you have hired definitely a number of people based on your experience, any important tips you can suggest them. Yeah. See, there are two approaches to uh, conducting yourself as an interviewee, right? Approach number one is you look at the other party and try to convey, present what you believe will be well received, yeah. right? Uh, and the other approach is uh, you try to present your best insider, who you are truly. What do you like working on? How do you work? How do you learn? What does not work well for you? What are the few challenges that are important uh, that you're dealing with in the last, you know, say one year or so, right? And what are the important learnings that you have taken as you work yourself out of those challenges, right? If I look at a, first of all, let's be clear that there are all kinds of managers. Some are good at understanding people, some are bad at understanding people, right? Yeah. <laughs> and therefore, that also reflects on how they conduct interviews and so on, right? Yeah. And that's why, why I, I, I try to give this advice to everyone is, I think it's a futile exercise to try to figure out what the manager on the other side of the table is like. That's true. That's, That's true. Or what they want to listen to, what they want to hear to, etc. Right? Try to try to express who you are. Right? Let me imagine myself as a one of those good managers, right? Who's genuinely trying to do the right thing, right? I would argue that there is no manager who falls in that category who does not want to achieve the following three. Number one, they want the best talent to come into their team. Yeah, correct. Right? Number two, they want that talent to be a hungry talent. Yeah, eager to learn. Yeah. And number three, they want that talent to be somewhat compatible or value add to the culture, morale, et cetera, of the team. Yeah. Worst case, they don't want to bring someone who will bring it down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ideally, they want someone who would raise the bar. Yeah. So focus on those three things. Start from expressing why are you the best talent? Not in a way that brags it, but talk through evidence, talk through proof points, talk through the projects you have done, the accomplishments you have, the learnings you're doing, the experiences that have made you who you are, right? Yeah. Second, convey your passion somehow. So the hunger that you carry within you shows Right? And it's not again about bragging, but it's about conveying to the other party that you are really hungry for the opportunities that are awaiting you in your life, right? And you are humble enough to know that you're not there yet, but you're hungry to get there. Right? Yeah. And then third is, you know, be yourself. Tell them what works well for you, what environment you appreciate, what kind of managers you like to, you know, work for, 
what kind of teammates do you expect? Tell them your ways of working and also show some self-awareness by saying, what is it within your ways of working that you believe needs to get better? And what are you doing about it? So, you know, all of these three things essentially boil down to be a genuineness, right? Yeah. And don't get me wrong. I'm not being stupid and naive that, you know, that will not work with some people. (laughs) (laughs) But my counter argument is, do you really want to go and work for that person? Yeah, that that will be also one question. And uh, I can definitely relate those three points you mentioned. And uh, since I have already given like multiple interviews, I have been through it. So during this hiring manager round, that's what I have observed. Like you need to represent yourself as a true personality. But don't try to be a, like fake or you are just pretending to be, right? Whatever you like, just express yourself. And that's what I have done. And these are the opportunities and these are the cultures I'm looking forward to. Correct. You can be fake, but you're going to end up in a scenario where you have to always keep a fake mask on. Yeah. And it's not easy to do that, my friend. 10 hours a day is what we spend it for. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Can you fake? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. it's, it's so I, that is my dream uh, that, you know, if I make a small contribution to this world, it is to, you know, kind of bring out that common understanding in as many people as I can is that if you're not being yourself at work, you will be stressed. If you're stressed, you will not do your best. If you're not doing your best, that latent potential that everyone carries within themselves, I talked about before, will not turn into kinetic potential. Yep. That's that's true. Uh, I think uh, that's what I, I just wanted to know from you, sir, uh, because of your experience. And I think audience would have enjoyed this session definitely um, and uh, since I learned a lot from your experience of, of uh, being into different uh, roles and uh, your initial learning how you actually started from that point where everything was uh, like uh, just started IT industry or things into the IT industry was getting started you started from that point I think people can learn from it that uh, there is no bar for you it's all always about your learnings how much eager you want and your journey like accidental movement into this IT industry how you grab those opportunities those were really interesting and the main important part about the every dot one that's the uh, I think that would be the highlight of this podcast that uh, how you can utilize that platform and how useful it is going to be so thank you very much uh, sir for uh, spending your time with us and sharing your wonderful experience and learning with my audience Uh, it was definitely a pleasure to have you it was completely my pleasure, Shashank. It's so good to have this conversation with you. I'm glad that uh, you had the patience to listen. <laughs> and, uh, listen. You, know, you have a, a wonderful, that, encouraging yeah. smile. You know, <laughs> uh, it's a million dollar smile you have over there. So, thank you. Thank you so much. I can now understand why a lot of people come and talk to you. Congratulations for uh, you know being who you are and best of luck to you. Thank, thank, thank you for having so me. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So that was all about this podcast, guys. I hope you would have liked it. Whatever experience he has shared, definitely that was pretty amazing. Like 20 years back, whatever he was started and he he was working with, that's a very, very long way he has covered so far with multiple roles. Such a plethora of experience in different domains, whether it is panel computing, compiler designing, creating large scale products and managing the people. So It was pretty amazing for me, pretty informative and I have learned a lot from him. If you did, then make sure to give a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and in your circle. And if you are new to the channel, then make sure to subscribe and press the notification icon. I will see you guys in the next podcast. Till then, just stay safe, stay home, take care yourself in this COVID pandemic and your family too.